Hi there, it's Kevin with The Rogue Market here with another sale video. I know that I said I was gonna get back to doing these weekly. Hopefully I can get back in the swing of things and start to do these videos because there are some juicy stuff. We are seeing an interesting time in the market. I think the distributors are finally starting to get frustrated and maybe they got the green light from Wizards of the Coast, but they've seen the prices on the Amazon dumps. They've seen the prices on TC Player and on eBay and whatnot. And they are also starting to adjust prices downwards and doing these sales. There's a good hot Halloween sale over at one of the distributors as well as our main distributor can continues to put out weekly deals that have just been absolutely crazy. So I'm going to give you just a few of my favorite ones in this video. And if you are a patron, I do have a Google Sheets up right now for the Halloween sale. And there are some other really good ones that you can take advantage of. But I'm going to try to keep this video a little bit short. Uh, we are going to be talking about the point or the point, the uh, play boosters uh, over at the Rogue Deck Builder channel for Market Monday on a Tuesday because I didn't get it done yesterday. Today, uh, because I think there are a lot, there's a good topic to be discussed there about the implications of moving away from set boosters and draft boosters over to this quote unquote play booster. And again, if you haven't really heard about this, it's been everywhere on YouTube. Uh, they are getting rid of set boosters and draft boosters, creating one product, and it's going to be a mix of the two. So I am quite concerned about this product. I'm glad that set boosters are going away, but it still has problems like one foil per pack that just devalues the whole point of foils, as well as it still has that list slot, which the list slot is actually kind of confusing because it does say in the article that it's going to have, I believe, a pull rate that's less than the, the rates of list cards were in set boosters. But you also have to think that you're combining the two products together. So if you take all the sales of draft boosters and all the sales of set boosters and 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 think that they're going to be now consolidated into the sales of these this play boosters, that's going to, to lead to a lot of list cards entering into the market uh, through that new venue. And I am not a fan of list. I think that if Wizards of the Coast wants to reprint sets, then they can't also do secret layers and list. So they have to kind of pick or choose. They can't have their cake and eat it too uh, with how they're going to get pr reprints into the mix. And I think they're they're killing their own quote unquote reprint equity by doing list cards to begin with, because I don't think when people were purchasing set boosters, they really even accounted for that list slot to begin with, because you have to, it's hard to actually figure out what list cards exist in what uh, set. You actually have to go and find the post by Wizards of the Coast and kind of compare and contrast of which ones remained in the list and which ones were which ones were added, which ones were removed. And it's just kind of a headache. And and, and I know that the sites like Donglare haven't even tried to, um, do an EV calculator because the list slot is just such a mess in the set boosters. Anyway, discussion for another day. This one's going to be talking about currently the, the sales that we have going on at the distribution level and give you some of my quick picks. So first of all, I have this one here, which is the Dominaria United Collector Booster. This one's interesting. Um, it's not the greatest deal, comparatively speaking, to what I can get it for. I can I can get this sucker right now for I believe I can get it for 140, and it's going for on TC Low for one 147, and seven bucks is about how much it costs me to ship a, a collector's booster. But if you buy multiples, of course, you're going to save on shipping at that point. Um, but the Dominator reminded clerk me wrong. This has the opportunity to get a Legends card in it, and last time they did this when they inserted. Re potential reserve list cards in, you know, sealed boxes. These suckers age very well. You got to think of OG Zendikar and they did this for OG Dominaria too, didn't they? I'm, there was one other time they, 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 you were able to get, uh, old, you know, cards that they, they, they put in packs. They just inserted in packs. And this one, correct me wrong. This was, was the one Dominaria United. And we've seen a little bit of a bounce back for this product from a 125 that was due to an Amazon dump. And it's now recovered back, uh, to, you know, 147 is the lowest one that, however, the last ones that have been sold is 142, but that has been trending upwards. And there actually isn't that much uh, before you start getting into 150s here with these sellers. And I'm actually starting to see a lot of these sellers start to get consolidating. This is another topic I need to have for another day about how I think there are just too many cooks in the kitchen where I think we're going to start seeing less sellers in the sealed market because they're just absolutely getting killed with the spread. And people are starting to realize that you, it might be more uh, fulfilling to just go flip burgers. If you, A lot of people simultaneously during the, the COVID lockdown times thought that they, they could make a, you know, a, a really robust, uh, profitable 
business by, you know, selling their their hobby, doing these these just the online only uh, sales. And I think that they they actually are going to get out competed by local game stores that have both the brick and mortar. I know the overhead is high for brick and mortar, but if you can get a good cash flow from the brick and mortar as well as online, you do have that kind of leg up on people that just do online only. And I actually think that Wizard Coast is going to go back to being supporting uh, more of that that route because they have seen kind of what the Amazon dumps have done. And I, I think we're, we, we are, we're close to a, 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 a turning point with things. Maybe, maybe I'm just being a little too positive thinking here because I do, you know, I personally have a lot invested in my own brick and mortar local game store and I do sell online. Uh, but I, I think that that is going to be the route to go. But anyway, going back to these Dominion United, um, the other thing I like about this one is usually when you have a high value mythic, like $100, potential mythic this is also something that sells the set long term and so you have a high chance of getting a shieldred and we've actually seen shieldred start to recover in price it's now the lowest shieldred is back up to 75 bucks with the the shouldered phyrexian and the phyrexian foil is back up to a hundred dollars and so you have a high chance in the collector's boosters if you if you go the booster uh box route to get one of these shieldreds and yes it is a big jump from shoulder to the next thing which is timeless lotus or lilian of the veil or Leyline Binding, but those cards are also really, really high demand. And they've just, it's just the overprinting of products. And again, a discussion for another day of, of we've seen some consolidation there. We've seen some lower print runs in the, the most recent sets that I think the writing is on the wall for Wizards. And I don't think they have a choice, but to start to tighten their belts because we're seeing $100 uh, uh, new Capenna collector's boosters. We're seeing $100 um, what was the other one I saw? Forgotten Realms, Collector's Boosters. We've seen just dump after dump after dump. And I'm thinking that Wizard of the Coast is going to change tone and realize that, hey, maybe printing less is printing more and keeping the value and making sure that people uh, feel good about their purchase. I mean, just put yourself in the shoes of people that purchased New Capenna um, that wasn't that long ago for even at distri distribution price at 180 and now it's down to 100 bucks. Or if they, heaven forbid, paid MSRP for something like a New Capenna Collector's Booster and just seen their their uh their purchase go down you know 80 percent of the value of what they purchased it for which is absolute insanity so at, at some point wizards needs to reestablish confidence in the market and realize what worked for for you know 25 plus year is probably the, the better route to go than just completely overprinting everything and then going the the direct to consumer route that has just absolutely killed the brand so this what i like about dominaria is it's one of those products that this is a set that isn't very beloved at the moment but still having a hundred dollar potential shieldred or having those legends cards is going to be something that i think is going to make this this particular product age well so getting into the price at 140 not too crazy comparatively speaking to going the you know the tc route going, you know going my route uh, but I think it is it's still a pretty good buy at that point. On to the next one. This is another product that has rebounded in the last few days. This is the Universes Beyond uh, Warhammer 40k deck. So what I like this product is twofold. There's a there's a very good spread. I can currently get the Universes Beyond uh, Warhammer. Let me find it here on my my list here of what it's going for. Um, okay, I, this one this one is currently going for about 170 at the price. So this one was sold out. I could have got this for 147, but now I, I do have notes here that it has sold out at the distribution level, but this one still can be had for 170. And this is a pretty good spread for the Warhammer decks as they are profitable in two aspects here. Uh, if you go the TCG player route, that's a, a decent spread that covers the fees at that point, and they are starting to, to trend up. But what I also do like is is going the buy list or just the singles route. And like I mentioned earlier, I think that that we're seeing this this kind of weird market with uh, mass box opening just doesn't seem to happen as much. I think that the the where it is super competitive at the moment is the sealed market where everyone and their dogs seem to get into the kind of the flipping the sealed market and simultaneously less people got out of the breaking down products and going to the singles market and so this has led to some opportunity for not just selling on like tissue player and ebay but even buy listing and this is one of them that is super close if you just go from the buy list price of a lot of these cards the buy list price on like card kingdom is actually razor thin for a lot of these type of cards and we've actually seen quite the price increase i don't think you can see it it's, it's kind of off the screen here for the weekly weekly price increases they're over here but a lot of these have gone up like it's all positive in this column rather than 
uh, negative, and that's what you start to see. And you can also start to see it here, where the the total main set price of these cards has gone from a low of 326 all the way up to 475. So this product is recovering, and that's typically when I I start to to get in on these these products is when they are starting to recover and they they are still being blown out at a reasonable price. So I wouldn't wait on this this Warhammer. Again, I, I, I missed the boat on this. Let's see if the distributor does add more of these for the, the Halloween sale because they were going for 147 was the price for the Universes Beyond uh, Commander decks. So uh, I'll keep you posted if you are a patron because they were out of stock, but I did see them slightly going back into stock. I'll have to talk to distributors, see if I can get at that price. But anyways, even at the other distribution price, I think 170, 180 is very, is very reasonable as well. On to the next one. This is the, the Kamigawa Neon Dynasty Collector Booster Omega Packs. So if you don't are familiar with what Omega Pack is, Omega Pack is just one collector's booster. It's kind of like a Russian doll product. It's a, a, a tiny product within a product within a product. So these typically collector boosters, they came in these outer cases that had the Omega Packs in them. And they had these inner case things that just have the one pack in there that is actually just a, a tiny pack in this massive box. The lowest one's actually going for 26. The problem with this is no one knows they exist. You can see that it's like two of them have sold in the last like forever because no one's even actually searching for these Kamigawa. Uh, but there's another way you can actually break these down. If you go to Kamigawa uh, Collector's Booster, there's another way that you can actually sell them. And you can see that they are selling for about 20 bucks is what they're going for, uh, going the, the Collector's Booster. So my price of just going the Omega Packs are is 15 bucks. And so if you were to make a collector's booster display 12 of them that'd be 180 bucks and currently i can get them for 185 for kamigawa so any route you decide to go uh either the full collector sealed boxes or going these omega packs i think is pretty good comparatively speaking for what they're, they're going for in tc player which is again 205 so at that point the spread is right there of where you want it to be at 205 i think we're going to start to see this 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 product also recover because this is another product that does have a high chase card in the form of the hitsugu uh ink foil or neon ink foil at, at like it's over a thousand bucks is what this 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 card's going for, and even the the neon ink one is going for over a hundred dollars. And then this this set is just just packed full of high demand cards, uh, like the uh, Bazejus that sell quite well, with the Wander Emperors that see play Pioneer and in Standard, and it's things like Ottawara that just sees play across the board. Like these are just such shoe and commander decks. You can there's no reason not to run all of these. Uh, colored. If you're in green, you're running Bazaju. If you're in blue, you're running at Ottawara. I mean, there's no point not to in Commander. So I think these are going to age well if they don't get reprint after reprint after reprint. So that's kind of the, the million dollar question it is, is are these going to be put on list cards? Are these going to be put on secret layers? Are these going to continue to be flooded in the market? Or is Wizards of the Coast eventually going to respect kind of the secondary market and their own value? Because again, they've, they've been, there have been some tweets and there have been some articles that, that obviously Wizard Coast is aware that they've just completely devalued their game. And so we might see some changes to try to, to uh, you know, I, it might be a little bit too late, honestly, because the overprinting from the 2020 era to 2023 is just unprecedented. And it's going to take a lot of factors before the market can recover, before demand can actually start outstretching the supply. And the supply at this point, at this era, seems endless. But that's a million dollar question is if they do, if they do start to focus what I think they're going to do, which is more focusing on newer products like the universe is beyond and give the reprints a breathing room, then these particular products are, are going to, could actually age spectacularly. So again, this is this is a product that I think is, is great to go either route. 185 is my price on the Kamigawa collector's boosters or $15 per Omega pack. And I can break these down for you if I, you know, oftentimes I can I can't can get overloaded with breaking down products, but tip of you are a good patron, you're nice to me, you know, I'll definitely break these down and just into the, the single collector's boosters and that way you can save on shipping rather than, you know, having these big boxes sold to you. So Kamigawa, great product. I think it's a, a, a reasonable pickup right now at that price point. On to the next one, which is just a no-brainer. This is Commander Legends uh, Battle for Baldur Gate Draft Boosters. Now, I've already ordered hundreds of these. I don't know how much more the distributor will sell me. These are being blown up for $63. Bucks. And that this is great compared to TC Player. I mean, these are selling too. I mean, a few per day is pretty good. They were selling a little bit hotter with the release of the game. But you can see the price has gone up, 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 up. So it was 85 bucks at the start of the month. Let's see what they were. Yeah, this is this is exactly what you want to see for a product. It was, you know, low 80s up to 96, still selling. 
Um, and, you know, very reasonable to get in at 63 bucks. For Commander Legends, this is also a product that does have inverted or positive EV, meaning if you actually open up the packs, you would make back your money. I believe even still at the 80s is $90 price tag for these you will make your money back so this has a lot of good cards in it the ancient copper dragons a lot of five dollar slots here and if you i you can see too uh that the low of the set was at 345 it's gone back up to 385 again that is where you start looking at these sets if they're going to be good pickups if you can still reasonably get in at the sealed price of them and that the singles prices are going up it's just a slam dunk of a win so commander legends is i can still set boosters too but i think and, and prelease kits too i think prelease kits for like 12 bucks set boosters for what are set boosters going for set boosters are going for they're pretty low too. I'll have to find it. Again, I have a whole spreadsheet if you are a patron that can show you the sales prices of, of these particular products. But I would not wait on this product. Like I said, I've already ordered over 100 of these for patrons and haven't really even uh, done a post about it yet. So I don't know how much more the distributor will actually allow me to order of these this particular product. So I would not wait on this sucker. But there is one product that I think is even better than these draft boosters. And this is the uh, Martin Machines Commander Deck set of five. So our good friends over at RNG Games posted a video about being able to sell the Plane Chase sets on eBay for 85 bucks and sold actually sold 11 of these in the past few days for 85 bucks. So if you can get in for 105 for the March Machine Commander decks, that means it'd be 20 bucks would be the the the, the total for all. Of them. I know there's fees and other stuff associated, but give or take, it's it's, it's definitely a insane value for you know $25 for five full sets worth of commander decks of singles now commander decks are getting crushed they're absolutely getting murdered because Wizards of the Coast has been releasing these at too high of intervals where it's just killed the value of what used to be cards that were able to hold like the three to five dollar price tag think of soul ring soul ring was a card that every year when they were doing the one commander deck per year soul ring would always half in value and then go back up to six bucks. So we get down to three bucks at its low and go back up to six bucks. Now though, with the release of commander decks with like a lot of the dual lands, a lot of the, the we typically when they make commander decks, I figure out the formula for Wizards of the Coast. If they want these to sell for like a hundred bucks, they put $125 worth of cards in there. They want them to sell for 50 bucks, they put $65 worth of cards in there. But what inevitably happens with those decks though, is then the cards actually go below that. And that's kind of the problem that's, that's, that's happened for these commander decks is then, a week or two later when people do the mass box openings to, to splice out the singles because the singles are worth more than the sealed product then it actually devalues the the uh, cards to the point where they don't have any value in them and if you have again good old supply and demand if the supply is too hard or too 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 high and the demand doesn't uh eat them up then you actually have cards that just get completely devalued and devalued and devalued and so we've seen that with commander because it keeps picking the same choices over and over however this particular set this was actually the 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 big release of the year so what they do with commander decks is they release the two per set for what they consider more the intro level commander decks the, the lower price ones and these were actually the higher priced march machines i can't remember what the the original msrp of these suckers were supposed to be but they were a lot higher than just your normal one and so getting five decks for 105 as well as these plane chase cards that can sell for you know 85 bucks um, this is absolutely a slam dunk of a deal. I've ordered a ton of these suckers. Um, these are things I can break down for you too, if you just want me to break down and send the plain chase cards and the the uh, the dice and whatnot. This is another route we can go uh, with the March and the Sheens. So anyway, um, those are my picks for this week. Again, I want to get better back to doing these videos. I know weekly. I'm going to try to get them out on Mondays. And I think now is the time actually this channel is actually relevant again to where we're seeing enough things in the market where there are a lot of interesting arbitrage opportunities, a lot of like commander decks are now spiking cards again. And that's what I used to like about this channel is when the market was just so volatile for the past few years that I just kind of threw my hands up in the air and I'm like, I to hell with this this is just too frustrating to try to keep up with everything but now it's it's at a time where i think there's a lot of like interesting little niches that you can actually get into like this is a perfect one this is the stu type, type of stuff i used to love is where i could find an opportunity where you know playing chase cards selling for this high and then you can just make so i've got arena starter kits those have some very interesting things right now every one of them are profitable if you actually break them down and buy list them so i'm going to be doing a video for that and like i said i'm going to uh, be doing a video kind of dissecting the 
uh, what we call the play boosters and what impact I think that, that that's going to have on not only the market, but kind of the, the limited play. It's going to be very interesting because I can already see pre-releases with these play boosters, you know, where people get the kind of the God <laughs> packs where they have four mythics in a pack and some bonkers list card like a Blightsteel Colossus or something that just can't be handled in the format. And it's going to lead to some very interesting gameplay. Can you imagine that like the pro level too, if they do like a, a limited environment and some pro just gets like these nutty list cards out of their, their, uh, their <laughs> their their play boosters they're gonna have to make some sort of like banning of like you can't use your list cards or something if that's the case it really warps the format because you think of like if you played in Strixhaven like channel what channel did to the the like I remember channeling into wandering archaic a lot of a lot of games or I think there's even a better route like that was the was the burn spell that you could use you could channel into it anyway I digress uh come over to the rogue deck below channel I'll have that video out uh, later tonight as well as if you do want to keep up with everything I do definitely come over to the Gonro Games channel that's where I give my my hopefully can get back to my daily rant videos on kind of the behind the scenes running a store and kind of kind of talking about the market and also talk about things non-magic there so uh, love to see you there and I hope you enjoyed this video and if you are a patron definitely take advantage of these deals it's beyond this there's I've just given you five products here we have like I'm looking at the sales. There's 40 from one distributor, and there's a good 10 or so from the other distributor I think are pretty good. And there's also some Pokemon and Flesh and Blood and some other deals that are going on right now that I think is worth your while. So if you're not a patron, come over to patreon.com slash rokedeckbuilder and give it a checkout, see if it works for you. Um, you can combine things with like sleeves, deck boxes. We do a lot of cool stuff over there. Uh, play mats. Anything that I can get from distributors are eligible for your rewards, for your kind of tier rewards is what they're called. So definitely come and check that out. Hope you enjoyed this video. This has been Kevin with the Rogue Market. As always, thanks for watching.